Hi everyone, my name is Rabbi Allison Solomon. I wanted to talk with you today about vision and sort of source, source the conversation from Torah, ancient scripture, here comes a wave, and share with you two elements that, that I learned from often. One is the role of Arafel, the role of fog. It says in our, in our sacred narrative that actually the Ten Commandments, our most sacred, um, kind of pithy, laconic, straight to the point parameters about how we can be in relationships with ourselves, with one another, and with holiness, it was given to Moses, to Moshe, on a mountaintop, and it wasn't given in the clear sunlight. By any means, it was actually given uh, in great fog, Arafel. And our tradition says that actually it's that Arafel, that fog, that gives the people of Israel, all of them gathered at the, the base of that mountain, the source of that mountain, it gives the people the ability to kabel, to receive, to take in. We know the word kabel from Kabbalah our ancient mystical tradition of receiving. So that, it was the role of that Arafel, the role of that fog, which actually allowed the people to kabel those Ten Commandments. That's number one, the role of fog. Surprising, I know. Secondly, I want to point to Moses and remind us that when Moses saw the burning bush, it might very well have been that there were hundreds of burning bushes. And in fact, Moses himself could have walked by dozens. Something occurred on that day, in that moment, for Moshe to actually see that bush. And I want to kind of walk us through the text and offer an indication that I think improved Moshe's ability to see the bush that day, in that moment. And it was that the text says, that Moshe was invited to remove his shoes, come closer, and actually turn his gaze. The Torah sort of offers a beautiful image of Moshe, rather than looking straight on into that burning bush, the text reminds us that Moshe made a turn in his gaze, made a slight shift in the way that he was looking at that bush in order to, again, to kabel, to receive that vision, to receive that charge that he was about to receive, to become the prophet that he was so, uh, at that moment, you know, unwilling, uninterested in becoming. So these two textual sources, I think, offer us a lot about our own lives in a way that we might, one, utilize fog, because Lord knows we've got plenty of it in our lives, in our world. Everywhere we look are opportunities to be covered in the haze, um, eluded, precluded, um, distracted by the static, that sort of haze, that um, opulence of what is really there. And secondly, the the opportunity to turn our gaze slightly, to just take a different perspective, just even that slight reorientation of our frame gives us a whole other perspective on what we can truly see. So with that, I offer us the opportunity to utilize our fog and turn our gaze in order to have real chazon, real vision for what's possible.